Raider Nation, subscribe to the Raiders Report if you live by these words. Win, lose, or tie, it's Raider Nation till I die. Usually after a Raiders loss, I show up the next day at work, I'm really angry. But you know what? I actually am more confident in this football team than I have been in a long time after a loss because of the effort that they put on the field on Sunday. Yes, you lost another double-digit lead, but if you didn't watch that game feeling a little bit more confident in Josh McDaniels, I'm sorry, I think you're a little bit crazy. Coming up here are top trending stories around the silver and black after their loss to the Niners. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report in today's show presented by Roan. I love Roan because no matter what, when I wear their commuter shirt, whether it's hanging out with my buddies after work at the bar or date night with Alex, it always looks great. 20% off using promo code chat sports. And if you want to get your hands on this awesome shirt, it's roan.com slash chat sports. So after a loss, there's always a lot of rumors, speculation, a lot of things to talk about, especially when it's an overtime loss against your biggest rival or arguably your biggest rival in the San Francisco 49ers. So coming up here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the top three trending topics and Make sure you watch until the very end of the show if you want some details on what Jeremy and I are doing tomorrow. So let's talk about it. The first one here is benching Derek Carr was the right move. This is for just win, babies. Believe it, baby. I know there's a lot of car truthers out there that might not like to hear this, but when you watch that game yesterday, you have to be able to sit down and be like, Okay, it was clearly the right thing to do to decide to move on from DC4. You can still disagree with how it was done. I do still disagree with the way it was done. Derek deserved to have his applause at Allegiant Stadium. But if he would have got that yesterday, there were still more 49ers fans at Allegiant. So here's the reasons why I believe moving on from Carr was the right move. Stidham balled out. I'm going to take a big old L to the forehead right here because I once said that the best version of Stidham is the worst version of Derek Carr. That's clearly wrong. Stidham looked incredible. In fact, it was one of the best games I've seen a quarterback play against one of the best defenses in the NFL. He was 24-34, 365 yards, three touchdowns. I think both of his interceptions were extremely unlucky. And then he also added the ability to run seven carries for 34 yards. The fact that this man had almost 400 yards of total offense against the number one defense in the NFL. My hat's off to Jared Stidham, and I can't believe I'm going to say this. My hat's off to Josh McDaniels as well. So you tell me. Was benching Derek Carr the right thing to do? We're going to make this the pinned comment on today's show. And I can still, if people want to say no, it's your opinion because the Raiders still lost the game, which at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. But this is a legitimate argument to have. I'm going to type my Y for yes. Y'all are going to get hit with the YouTube ad break, so scroll on down and let me know. Was benching DC the right thing to do? Let's go to the next reason. This was the best offensive game of the year. And I don't think that you can really argue it. Did you lose? Yes. Did the Raiders score as many points as what they have in some other games? No. But the defense was bad in this one, and we'll talk about them. Don't you worry. To have 500 total yards of offense against the number one defense in the league, allowing 15.3 points per game, Raiders put up 34. And realistically, if you convert on that fourth and one play, you get a touchdown, and then you're putting a 40-burger on the Niners, or even if you kick a field goal, you end up winning the game. These are the type of decisions that this Raiders organization does have to get better at making. But overall, rushing looked good. Your passing game looked maybe the best that it's ever had, and the quarterback play of Stidham was solid. And this is just the fact from what I've seen. It's a one-game sample size, very, very small sample size. You shouldn't look at Stidham versus Carr. That's not how you should look at this. You should look at this as Stidham and McDaniels, from what I've seen so far, is better than D.C. and McDaniels. Stidham clearly was a better fit in this offense because of his ability to move than what I have saw from Derek Carr. And here we go. Next thing, I saw all these people out on social media. Is anybody else noticing that the game plan is significantly different with Stidham at quarterback than D.C.? It was different. And McDaniels, I thought, called a better game. I was really intrigued and happy the amount of times that you saw whether the Raiders on a third and one rollout with Stidham. I don't know if we saw that many rollouts the entire season. McDaniels, to me, though, clearly changed his play calling because he trusted Stidham. You didn't really see him going in the bag of trick plays for the simple fact of that a lot of times I felt like they went with trick plays when they didn't trust Derek to make certain moves. The offense looked good. The play calling by McDaniels was different. But I think that that has more to do with Jarrett Stidham 
then McDaniel's just trying to screw over Derek Carr. Now today's show again, y'all, is presented by Roan. It's Roan.com slash chat sports. 20% off your order when you use promo code chat sports. I love these t-shirts, and I don't even know if I'm allowed to say this, but I thought it was clever, and we're going to go with it. If you're wearing Roan, you know she's going to be down to bone. I mean, the flexibility of these t-shirts, the dress shirts is unbelievable, and whether you're wearing them to work, whether you're wearing them with your buddies, you're going to absolutely love the way that you're, they fit your body. So when you think about having a great dress shirt personally for me the commuter collection that can get you through any work day and straight into whatever comes next head to roan.com slash chat sports and use promo code chat sports to save 20 percent off your entire order that's 20 percent off your entire order when you head to r h o n e dot com slash chat sports and use code chat sports it's time to find your corner office comfort i mean the versatility in these shirts alone is why i love them a lot of times when I wear a dress shirt, I don't like how they feel on my body. The fact that these are super stretchy, flexible, that's great. The fact that you can machine wash these so you don't got to spend money on the dry cleaner, great. And then maybe the biggest reason, the wrinkles. You don't, you're not going to get wrinkles with these shirts, so you don't got to waste all that extra time with the ironing board. I hate doing that. Comfortable, they look good, and I'm pretty sure your lady friends are going to like them as well. Roan.com slash chat sports, promo code chat sports, 20% off your order. Let's go to the next reason here why benching car was the right move. Stidham helped the O-line. I mean, the offensive line did not give up a single sack to the 49ers. Was the play by Nick Bosa where he pushed Colt Miller into Stidham that forced an interception? Yes, that's a bad play, and that really impacted the game. But we got to be able to face the facts here, y'all. If Derek Carr is the quarterback in that game yesterday, I see three or four times where you would have ended up with a sack. Stidham showed that he was a tough mother effer, stayed in the pocket. My favorite play that Stidham had was he's rolling out to the opposite side, so his left side, waiting, 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 gets absolutely drilled. But because he was able to move outside of the pocket, showed pocket awareness, he hit Devontae Adams for a long touchdown, which put the Raiders in a great spot. I had so many people ask me, Mitch, how many points do you think the Raiders score if Derek Carr's the quarterback? Honest to God, and swear on my grandfather's life, I believe that the Raiders lose by two touchdowns if Derek Carr's the quarterback. Jared Stidham was a clear upgrade on Sunday. And then here's the final reason, and maybe the most important. You don't risk D.C. getting injured. And I get the idea that the way that this Raiders team did it was not the right way, but the way that they did it was business. And all I've seen from McDaniels, Ziegler, is business is business. And if you throw Derek out there on the in the game and he does get injured, well, then you're going to lose $32.9 million in 2023 and $7.5 million in 2024 on a quarterback that it's clear was part of the problem here in Las Vegas and clearly wasn't the best fit with Josh McDaniels. So, again, you can disagree with them benching him, but you have to be able to watch that game yesterday and say that benching Carr was the smart move to make for the long term for the Raiders. And you're, a lot of people are going to look at the thumbnail and they're going to like, Mitch, how can you say Derek Carr was the problem? I didn't say Derek Carr was the problem. I still think that defense is the main problem. However, you have to watch the game and say Derek has clearly been part of the problem. When your offense plays that great, when there is limited time together as an offensive team overall, a few days to practice, and that's the effort that you see from a team playing inspiring football, moving the field up or moving the ball up and down the field, Derek wasn't the main problem. But Derek Carr was clearly a problem with Josh McDaniels at the helm, which is why it's time to move on. And this might be the craziest thing I say in the entire show. I trust Josh McDaniels now more than I ever have before. And the reason is, after seeing a quarterback that can move just a little bit and has a little bit of mobility, if McDaniels is able to find a QB that has that mobility and on top of that also is a great fit in his offense, I want to see what it looks like, and that's a crazy, crazy thing to say out loud because they blew another 10-point lead. They are the first team in NFL history to blow 10 or blow five games of 10-plus leads in a season. It sucks, no doubt about it. We still lost the game, but I am more confident McDaniels seeing that because now I know if we can build a defense and we can get a better quarterback, 
your team's going to be better off without Derek Carr. So that's the truth. Here's what I want to know, though, and I'm going to give you my answer here in just a second, but I want to ask you all before I give my answer. Should Jared Stidham be the Raiders' starting quarterback next season? Type is number three if you're like, yes, he earned it. He deserves it. I get it. I'm a passionate person, too. If you're like, no, I want you to type your zero for no. So here we go. Jared Stidham, he's going to be the quarterback one next year. This show is an overreaction show, and this statement here is a clear overreaction. Stiddy played great. I mean, it was Stiddy time. We were getting Liddy Stiddy. I mean, show me those Stiddy. I mean, we were saying all sorts of stuff on our watch party yesterday, which, by the way, had over 165,000 people that tuned in. Shout out to all the real ones out there. Stiddy played great, but it's one game. <laughs> and, and that's the thing. It, it's one game. You got to be able to see what Stidham looks like going forward. And I'm also a big believer, once defensive coordinators, once defenses in general, they start to get more tape on you. They start to take away certain things that you did. Stidham had a great game. But to say that he should be the QB1 next season, I do think is a little bit far-fetched. If Stidham plays another solid game against the Chiefs, okay, we're moving in the right direction. No doubt about it. I do have a lot more confidence in Stidham than I ever thought I would. And who knows? If your idea is that you want to be able to bring in another quarterback, I think Stidham now has a lot more trade value than what you thought. I'll also throw this out there. <laughs> Jared Stidham was the first quarterback with three-plus touchdowns in his first start since 2013. The other, Matt McGloin, a perfect example of it's just a small sample size. It's just one game. If it was up to me and the way that I would run this Raiders organization, this would be my plan. I would draft a quarterback coming up here in 2023. Maybe if C.J. Stroud falls to wherever you're at, seven, eight, nine, it depends where the Raiders could be. If you want to try another player who's athletic, like an Anthony Richardson who can move around a little bit in the pocket, Will Levis is a very intriguing guy to me. However, I would draft a QB, and they're the future, but you also bring in a dude like Tom Brady who can execute the offense because I remember how many people were telling me Tom Brady's washed up, he stinks. He looked pretty damn good this past week against Carolina. 432 yards, three touchdowns, a rushing touchdown. Is he mobile? God, no. But you know what? All the money you're saving with Derek Carr, who knows? You might be able to invest that into the offensive line, invest that into your defense. Or your other option, if you don't can't get Brady because he wants too much money, go with Stidham. Go with Stidham. Still draft a quarterback for the long-term success because I do think that Stidham could at least kind of teach this system going forward now y'all if you haven't already hit me up on twitter or instagram make sure you do so at mitchell rents 365 and i'm also going to be live later today over on locals breaking it down with brandon jasper wild one and all the ogs over there so it's raidersreport.locals.com i do got to give some shout outs though to some ro4ls the real ones our mvp yesterday would help which helped the raiders report take down the 49ers report major shout out to raiders podcast he's going to get a signed Raiders chugging uh, Jeremy Helmet. I think it's pretty dope. Our hat winner, BP Lup. You got to message Jeremy on Twitter. He did. Cool. So we'll get you the hat. And then the person who commented the most yesterday during our live stream was Sarah Otto. So Sarah, you're going to be the week 18 moderator. I can message you on Instagram or you can message me either way. Thanks to all y'all for helping us uh, get a W against the, the 49ers report yesterday. And now the final story. Building a defense is the top priority. Four just win babies, believe it, baby. You can talk about quarterbacks all you want. Quarterbacks sell. That's the headline. That's the click. That's what people click on. But we got to be able to face the facts. I just told you that Stidham had an incredible game. I thought it was the best offensive game I've seen by this Raiders team this year, and you still lose 37-34. to 34. The Raiders obviously need a quarterback. It's not going to be Derek Carr. QB is a huge reason. But it doesn't matter if your defense sucks. The defense, I thought, has played well. If you were to look at the last seven games, I would say six out of the last seven games, the defense has played better, and Patrick Graham did look like he was getting it going. The defense against the Niners, though, totally depleted, lost a lot of starters, but it's just same thing over and over again, right? What I'm going to do is hopefully the money that you save from Derek Carr in 2023, which is 29.25 mil. Remember, once the Raiders trade him, it's going to be about a $5.625 million dead cap hit. So you use that 29.25 mil, and you use that plus your draft picks. I'm saying defense, defense, defense. And if you do decide to get a quarterback like Tom Brady, who's less mobile, then you do need to invest in that offensive line a little bit more. Quarterback is a problem. But the top problem with this team 
it is clearly still the defense. And I will say, McDaniels earned a little bit more credit in my book after seeing the game that he called up. And he's an offensive-minded coach. That's fine. But he's not an OC. Good head coaches learn and know how to build both sides of the football. So McDaniels, you got a hell of a task this season, offseason. you got to build a Raiders defense because the Raiders haven't had a top 16 defense. And I'm talking total points. I'm not looking at yards because at the end of the day, points is what matters. A top 16 defense points against the last time that the Raiders had that was 2002. Think about that. What were you doing in 2002? Hell, the last time the Raiders have only had a top defense in the top 20 once since 2002. If you can't build a defense, at least a halfway decent defense, you're not going to win football games, at least not win many football games, especially when it matters the most in December, January, and hopefully in February. Other Raiders news to cover here, the Las Vegas Raiders and Chiefs game. We thought it was going to be on Sunday. It's now going to be on Saturday at 4.05 p.m. Eastern time, which is then 105 Pacific time for a lot of y'all. Jeremy Juggs and I, we will be live for this game, even though the Raiders are out of it. I still want Las Vegas to upset the Chiefs. I'm never going to root for this team to lose. However, though... Yeah, Jeremy's saying FKC. Let's get some FKCs in the chat. However, though, if they do lose, you could be around the seventh pick. If they win, there's a chance that they could go all the way up to 13. So if you think that you want a guy like C.J. Stroud or Bryce Young also committed today, you probably got to be closer to seven. Long term, probably helps you to lose. But I don't go into any week wanting to lose. Before I wrap up today's show, I want you all to spam JJ or 28 because congratulations to Jacobs because him and Marcus Allen are the only Raiders to eclipse 2,000 total yards in a season. He did that this game up against San Francisco. And then more flowers to Devontae Adams. You got to make sure that you keep 28 and 17 very, very happy because with those guys, your offense is clicking, which is why I think defense still is the top priority. But again, Devontae Adams, he broke Tim Brown's single season receiving yards record right now Adams has 1,443 yards and 14 receiving touchdowns Tim Brown did it in 1997 with 1,408 yards if you made it this far in the video on Tuesday tomorrow Jeremy and I we're going to be live doing our normal show rumors I got a fun segment for y'all we're going to do a mailbag but because wild one a few weeks ago sent in a huge Venmo we are going to do a competitive taco eating contest. Taco Bell, Soft Shell, I don't know how many we're going to try to get down. C combined, Jeremy and I are hoping that we can get 50 down. We'll see how it goes, but if you want to see that literal shit show, tune in, hit that subscribe button, and turn on those notifications. That way you don't miss anything. Enjoy the rest of your Monday. Enjoy the rest of your holiday. I love y'all, and good things are coming here for the Silver and Black.